Hello everyone, it's finally time for another tea time with Chloe, so I've got my tea with me. Um, it's a very apt mug for me today, I got it for Christmas. It says, I'm an adult but not like a real adult and sadly I think that's probably me. Does anyone ever feel like an adult on the inside? because I still feel the same way I did when I was about 15, I swear. I'm filming this video when I've come straight in from work because I just got home and I just felt like filming it and the lighting in my spare bedroom is better than anywhere else in the house, so I hope this is okay. Um, but as you can tell from the title, I wanted to go through a little bit of a recap of 2018 and talk about my goals for 2019 because I have been planning them in my new bullet journal system and I just fancy talking about them. I film a video like this most years, I think. Um, and I was having a look at my goals for 2018. And yeah, I just wanted to talk about goals for this year, really, and some of my plans for this year. So, some of my goals for last year were things like spend less money, spend less time on social media, um, exercise regularly, things like that. Just like standard goals that people tend to set. Um, and I think I said I wanted to save up for a puppy as well um, because I had hoped to get another dog last year but Will is still not massively keen on the idea and also the timing just wasn't right with everything that happened last year. Um, so my goals were pretty general um, but I feel like for the first six months of the year I was actually doing really well. I felt like I really had a handle on things. Um, I got a gym membership for the first time ever and I started going to the gym before work in the mornings um, and I lost half a stone pretty quickly so my exercise regularly goal was going really well and I kept that up for about three or four months I think. I was doing genuinely really well. Um, I definitely spent less time on social media last year. Um, I used to post on my Instagram accounts pretty much every day. Maybe not my personal one but definitely the dog's ones and I cut that right back last year and that was a deliberate move. Um, I stopped taking as many photos, I stopped posting as many photos because I felt like I was getting obsessed with social media to be honest. Speaking of the dogs, Winnie is barking downstairs so I'm sorry if you can hear that. She knows that I'm here and she's not happy with me. <laughs> but yeah, so for the first six months of the year I felt like I was doing pretty well. Um, the one that's always tricky for me is anything to do with money because I really don't earn very much. Um, so when I've paid for all my bills, like my phone bill, everything to do with my car, the dog's insurance, pet food, hay for the rabbits that I seem to go through like nobody's business, you know, all those little things. And then if there's a birthday that month or some sort of trip that we're wanting to do or whatever, that's it, the money's gone and I find it virtually impossible to save. So that was the only one that I was really struggling with. The rest of them I was doing pretty well. Um, and then if, you'll watch, if you watch my videos regularly, you'll know that my mum um, was diagnosed with breast cancer at the end of June. Well, she had her first appointment in June and it was confirmed at the beginning of July that it, it was breast cancer and that really just turned my whole world upside down and people go through that sort of thing every day and I'm sure there are, you know, people who cope with it a lot better than I did but I just didn't really cope very well at all um, and they assured us that it had been caught early, that the prognosis was really good um, that she would just need a surgery to remove the tumour and um, possibly some radiotherapy but they weren't even sure if she would need that and um, we would be able to get on with our lives basically um, but it turned out she actually had cancer in both um, sides um, and so she had to have quite extensive surgery to remove those tumours and the surgery didn't go <laughs> particularly well she was rushed back into surgery again that night and I won't give you all of the gory details but it took a very long time for those wounds to heal so she's actually only just finished her radiotherapy this week so as I'm filming this we are in the second week of January and um, she's actually only just finished her radiotherapy this week because it took about four months for anything to start healing um, so it's amazing that she's now finished her treatment but it was a really really tough time and I I did a lot for the family in that time obviously I wanted to um, I'm the eldest child and um, I was also 
on summer holidays from work when mum had her surgery so it made sense for me to be the one to do things and I spent every day with her pretty much. Um, we were also moving house at the time so I was packing up the house and getting ready to move and then we moved so I was unpacking stuff and getting the new house sorted and it was a crazy time and I feel like after I went back to work and went back to university after the summer holidays obviously mum was still really poorly nothing was healing and all sorts um but I feel like I sank into one of the lowest periods of depression in my life I'm very lucky that it didn't last very long it only lasted about three months um probably from sort of September to the end of November but it was the worst I had ever felt in my life and I stopped weekly vlogging for a long time because I just my days were work, sit on the sofa and cry, go to university, come home and cry. Like, honestly, it was awful. And I just didn't do anything productive. So for the first six months of the year, I was really productive and really had my goals in mind. I was getting on with things. And then after mum's diagnosis, it just totally like turned my world upside down and everything just went wrong. Um, and then to add insult to injury at the end of the year, so in December, my youngest brother actually nearly died. Um, he took ill really suddenly. Sorry, I don't know why I feel emotional about it because he's fine now, um, but it's the first time I've spoken about it out loud since it happened last month. Um, yeah, so he took ill in November and we were told he had tonsillitis. Um, so he had antibiotics but he just didn't get any better he just got worse and he collapsed at college he was then he couldn't go to college at all he was really really ill and he looked like a skeleton the weight was just falling off him and he ended up being rushed to hospital and he was diagnosed with a rare autoimmune condition which again I won't go into the into masses of detail about he might actually watch this video so hi Liam if you're watching um I won't go into details about your illness but um he was diagnosed with a rare autoimmune condition and I think I took the news worse than he did but I know what a burden it can be to have a chronic illness that you know you're going to have forever and there is no cure for it and to constantly have to explain it to people and to know that there are periods of your life when you're going to be ill and there's nothing you can do about it um and you know you can it can just affect your life in so many ways and you know I've lost a, a really well-paid job because of being ill with Crohn's and um you know I, I work part-time and constantly struggle for money because of my health and stuff so I took it really badly because I just thought what has our family done to deserve this you know I obviously already had Crohn's my mum was then diagnosed with cancer my youngest brother then nearly died and was diagnosed with a rare autoimmune condition and at the same time we also had another close family member diagnosed with cancer and um, I ended the year really not very well I was very ill over Christmas and New Year and my Crohn's has flared up and I'm still really not well now um, I feel a little bit better since going back to work I think the mental distraction has been good but um, physically I have not entered 2019 in a very good way but mentally I feel like I have so after that massive long ramble which I wasn't going to do but I feel it gives you some context um, these are my goals for 2019 <laughs> I am really sorry guys, I was not going to ramble on that long in the beginning, but I just, <laughs> I just feel like sometimes you do need a little bit of context about why someone might choose a certain goal, but anyway, so, here is my bullet journal, which I'm loving very much, I posted a video about it last Monday, so I'll leave that linked in the description so you can go back and watch that if you want to see everything, um, my stomach just growled really loud. I hope the camera didn't pick that up, jeez. Um, I will leave the video linked in the description if you would like to go and see everything in closer detail because this is my goal setting page for this year. I've done a two page spread about my goals and I did share that in the video so you can go and see everything close up if you want to. But I thought I would just have this open so that I can see clearly 
what I want to talk about. So if I look down, I'm sorry, but it's because I'm looking at this. So my first goal of the year is to stop spending and I'm actually intending to have a no spend year, which sounds a bit scary and a bit crazy, but I'm thinking so far that it actually might be really good for me and it might be really helpful. Um, as I mentioned, I can only work part time because of my health. Um, I'm very lucky in that most of the time I'm quite well with my Crohn's disease. It doesn't affect me as much as it does affect some other people. However, I'm currently in talks with my doctor because we think that there might be something else going on, there might be something else wrong with me, um, because I always have pain. I have chronic pain every day, all over my body. This last week my legs have been absolute agony, so much so that if I roll over in my sleep the pain wakes me up. Um, it's really bad. Like as I'm sat here right now I've got a really horrible pain in my chest, I've got pain in my back, I've got pain in my legs. There's always something wrong with me and um, joint pain and things can be a symptom of Crohn's, however a lot of this is muscle pain so I'm wondering if there's something else going on. But anyway, because of that I work part time because working full time in an office just did not work for me. I was ill very quickly basically um, and I need time at home to rest and recuperate and that's why working in a school works really well for me but unfortunately working in a school is not a career that you do for the money. Um, you do it for the love of children and not for the paychecks because the paychecks <laughs> are not big and I know a lot of people are uncomfortable talking about money but I'm not really. I'm trying to cut costs in basically any way I can this year Last year I spent my student loan on a couple of holidays and I needed those holidays but in hindsight it caused me more stress afterwards because I didn't have any money to live. Um, so this year I'm wanting to save as much of my student loan as I possibly can as well as cutting any sort of totally unnecessary costs. So occasionally if I work a full day at work like I do every Monday um, I will take a lunch with me to work and then it will get to lunchtime and I'll decide that I don't really fancy it so I'll go to the shop and buy something. Um, so I'm totally stopping myself from doing that. I do tend to buy myself like a payday treat as well. Um, so on payday I'll buy something nice for the dogs or I'll get some scrapbook supplies or I'll buy myself a new jumper or something and I'm trying to train myself out of doing that as well because 99.9% .9 of the time I'm buying something that I don't need. So I'm just trying to stop doing that as well. So what I've done is I've I've written out all the reasons why I want to have a no spend year and those reasons are things like I don't want to cry when I look at my bank balance. <laughs> um, if an emergency happens, I don't want to have to borrow the money from someone else. Um, for example, I know my car needs a few things doing to it before it goes for its MOT and I need to save the money from my student loan in January to pay for those car repairs so I can't spend it on anything. Um, and also eventually I really would like to get another dog, um, also I would really like to get married so it would be nice to have some money to sort of buy things for the wedding. Um, Will and I have different priorities for weddings so you know if I want a really nice photographer it would be nice to actually be able to pay for the photographer that I want rather than going with a cheaper option and not getting nice photos of the day, stuff like that so um, yeah there's lots of reasons why I want to do a no spend year and I'm going to give it my best shot so that's one of my goals to, to have a no spend year. Obviously there are essentials I still have to buy, all my bills need to be paid, I still need to get petrol because I have to get to and from work and to and from university, I'm still allowed to buy birthday presents and cards for people and Christmas presents obviously but I'm going to try and spread the cost of that over the year rather than do it all in November and December and end up with no money. Um, and obviously things like toiletries and some food items, so obviously we need to do a weekly food shop and stuff but I'm not going to go out midweek and buy food or go out to Sainsbury's on a, fri on a Friday and buy extra food or buy lunch at work or whatever when I don't need to, so yeah. My next goal is to go to the gym consistently again and go on proper long dog walks consistently. I spoke about this in a couple of vlogs and also in my bullet journal video but I actually have severe anxiety about walking the dogs which sounds so silly whenever I talk about it out loud but when I wanted a dachshund I joined a lot of dachshund groups on Facebook to try and find a dachshund 
to rehome. And I'm still in a lot of those groups because I love seeing people's pictures and whatnot. And every, I would say every week, there's at least one person that posts about their dog being attacked by another dog whilst out on a walk. And it really scares me. It absolutely terrifies me, to be honest. It's not something I ever really even thought about before when I just had Archie. Um, and I used to take him everywhere with me and just not even bat an eyelid. But once we got Winnie and I was in all those Facebook groups and seeing it all the time, it was like a slow burn. The anxiety built over time. And now I find it really difficult to take them out on a walk by myself, which is really sad. If we're just going out round the block, that's fine. I can do that. I do that nearly every day, just take them out around the block. But going on a really long walk in the woods or at the beach or through the countryside, I pretty much have to have someone with me. So consistent long dog walks because going around the block every day just isn't enough and you know, one long walk at the weekend with Will isn't enough. Um, I do take Archie to agility as well, so please don't think he's cooped up. They're not. I take them out pretty much every day, but I just don't always take them out to the woods or the beach or whatever unless I'm with someone else. Um, so as part of that goal, I would also like to um, make more of an effort to meet up with my dog logging friends and take the dogs on days out with them and stuff because, again, I feel a lot better when there's a pack of the dogs together and when I have more than one person um, with me. So, yeah. And going to the gym consistently speaks for itself. Um... Both of those goals, goals are also tied into like health and well-being because when I do manage to have a relaxed walk with the dogs, I feel amazing afterwards. I also feel amazing after I've been to the gym. I just need to force myself to go. And again, I've written down reasons why I want to do that. You know, about having clothes that will actually fit and not wanting to cry when I look in the mirror and all sorts. So, yeah. The next goal is a really simple one, so hopefully I won't bore you to death with another ramble but it's to stay ahead of the game, just stay ahead in general. So I mean staying ahead with Patreon and with university. My Patreon link is always in the description of my videos if you're interested. I post all of my creative content over there really, so my project life scrapbooking, creative journaling, the majority of it is over on Patreon. At the moment I post one creative video and one chatty video every month, as, long, um, as well as exclusive sneak peeks and photos and everything that other people don't get to see. Um, but I'm gradually working my way up to creating two crafty videos a month as well as a chatty video. So um, yeah, and there's different tiers over there as well. So you can pay a certain amount and receive certain perks, basically. Obviously, I'm not saying everyone has to become a patron, not at all. Um, I actually only have a couple of patrons, but it's just a nice little, you know... A nice little top up for me every month um the people who really like the crafty content are still getting to see it and yeah i want to stay ahead with it because with all the craziness that happened last year i was often creating a video to upload on the day that it was meant to upload um whereas this year i'm determined to stay ahead and i've already created all of my content for january um and that includes content for this main youtube channel as well this is my last video that i needed to film for this month so i'm massively impressed with myself to be honest um, yeah, and I want to stay ahead with the university and make sure that I do all of my work in advance. I currently have some essays due in next week, but I've been given an extension because of everything that's been going on with my family. So once these essays are out of the way, I want to start afresh and make sure that I'm always ahead with reading and taking notes and researching and all that sort of thing. I realise that a lot of my stress level is to do with procrastination and I always think I don't have enough hours in the day, but the truth is I do. I just waste a lot of time feeling sorry for myself because I'm always in pain and basically what I need to do is just take some paracetamol and just get on with it. <laughs> My last main goal is to explore more of the UK. Um, as I said, money is tight. I don't think we're going to get a holiday abroad in this year. I was very lucky last year I got four weekend city breaks. Um, I went to Disneyland Paris twice, I went to Finland for Will's birthday and I went to Sweden with all my girlfriends. Um, and it was amazing, 
but I spent my student loan on it and this year I can't do that so I don't think we're going to get a holiday abroad in. I think this year Will is planning some holidays with his friends because I always go away with my friends and he never gets a chance to so I think he's planning some holidays this year, it's his turn um, and he's planning some trips this year so I would like to explore more of the UK. Last year we went camping for the first time and we went to Cornwall and it was absolutely amazing. It was beautiful, the weather was beautiful. I thoroughly enjoyed camping, which I didn't expect at all. And I really want to do it again. So we've discussed going to Scotland, Wales, um, the New Forest. Where else did we talk about? We want to go back to Cornwall, maybe to Devon as well. Um, so we've got a few trips that we would like to do. I don't know how many we'll do or if, you know, if we'll get round to them all, but we, we definitely want to spend a lot of this summer camping and I can't wait. I also have a National Trust membership, which I used once last year, once. So I paid £30 for it for the young person's National Trust card and I ended up using it once. So that's another goal that ties into explore more of the UK. I want to use my National Trust membership and go and see these places because that we are so lucky in this country, we have so many beautiful properties um, and places as part of the National Trust and I definitely want to see more of them. So if we go away in the UK, I want to look up local National Trust properties and go and visit them. I'm a total history nerd, so any like period house, stately home type thing, I blooming love. So um, yeah, that's definitely something I want to do more of this year as well. The last goal that I've written down here is a reading goal and this year I'm determined to read 50 books. I've set my reading goal at 50 books for the last three years and I've not hit it once. I had a really good reading year where I read like nearly 80 books and then the next year I set my goal at 100 and I didn't even read 50. <laughs> um, and then last year I set it at 50 in January and knocked it down to 30 halfway through the year because there was just no way that I was gonna read 50 books and I ended up reading 31. But this year I'm determined to read 50 books. I have got a lot of reading to do for university and um, for the first time ever I'm gonna have to read like full books for it um, because you know, normally I just pick and choose chapters to read <laughs> that seem relevant, but for the first time I'm gonna have to read full books. So I'm determined to hit 50 this year and it's currently the 11th of January and I have read four books already. So I think that's pretty good going for 11 days in. Um, and I've also put read more classics because I have a beautiful collection of classic books and I haven't read half of them. So that's another goal for this year, to read more classics. Um, and I'm also going to be talking more about my reading on my YouTube channel this year. Um, I miss making book videos. I stopped doing it because I split it into two channels. So I made myself a reading channel and I hated having two channels. So I just stopped making book videos. Um, so I'm not going to do loads and loads of book content on here but I would like to do an updated bookshelf tour. Um, I also would like to film a reading wrap up every month so you can see at the end of the month what I have read and what I thought of those books and in my weekly vlogs I want to talk more about what I'm reading as well and I feel I've already started to do that so I hope you're excited about that because a lot of people tell me on Instagram all the time that they want me to show more of what I'm reading. So those are my goals for this year and I feel like again they're fairly simple. Um, stop my unnecessary spending, consistent gym and long proper dog walks, um, stay ahead with Patreon and university, explore more of the UK and read 50 books. There are also little things that I would like to do more, like plan out more like date days for Will and I, like quality time together. I'd also like to spend more quality time with my mum. We've always been close, but obviously over the last year with everything that's happened, we became even closer and I want to definitely take that into this year and beyond um, and spend more time with family in general. I also want to nourish my friendships more. Um, I'm always, I'm always there for people. Um, you know, I'm the first one to offer a sho shoulder to cry on if any of my friends need one, but I'm not always good at, at making the first step. Um, you know, I have one friend in particular who I have been friends with since year seven. So um, for, Oh wow. I think it's 14 years. Oh my gosh, I'm old. We've been friends for nearly 14 years. And um, she 
sort of settled down with her boyfriend. When we were all going off to university, she settled down with her boyfriend and they have a little boy. And she has a much busier life than me, I would say, because she works and she's got her little boy and everything. And yet she's always the one who texts me to arrange to meet up and she's always the one that reaches out to me and I want to make more of an effort to be the one to reach out to my friends first. Some of my friends are going through a really tough time at the moment and I want to make sure that I'm making the effort to be a better friend. Also a really random one is that I want this year to be the year of getting back into um, sharing more of the bunnies in my weekly vlogs because there are still people that watch my channel from way back when, in like 2009 and 2010, when I used to make purely, like purely just animal related videos, pet related videos, um, that was how my channel started. And I used to make videos about my rabbits and about my hamster, and then I went to uni and I um, made a few videos then about the, about the animals because they all lived inside with me in my uni house. And um, I'm not going to make pet related videos. <laughs> I've definitely grown out of that and, and grown past that. However, um, when I watch my weekly vlogs and stuff, I never have the rabbits in the vlogs because I don't spend a lot of time with them anymore, which is, is not a very nice thing to say, but the dogs are not good with the rabbits, so I can't really bring the bunnies inside. I could in the old house because we had the conservatory, but in this house it's virtually impossible without... Um, completely locking the dogs away and then they just scream the whole time the rabbits are out because they know they're there um, and the dogs would definitely try and eat the rabbits sadly then they're, they're not friends um, so it's it's hard for me to to spend a lot of time with them and to have them in the videos um, and also I lost a lot of my rabbits in the last couple of years of old age and illness and um, I have five left still a lot of rabbits I know um, and they all currently live separately because none of them get on and it's the rabbits stress me out okay I know this is a really random way to end this video but the rabbits stress me out they I have three girls who are huge personalities and all hate each other and then I have two boys who would probably get on with any of those girls but the girls are all such divas that it's just not really working out for me. But this year I would like to try and bond some of the rabbits together, give it another go, improve their living um, setup, their living situation, spend more time with them and um, yeah, include them in the vlog more. Cause I, I still have them, I still love them. I just never have them in the videos because people have always got something to say about them. So yeah, random way to finish the video. But my last goal is to have this year be the year that the rabbits make an appearance on my YouTube channel again. <laughs> So those are my goals for this year. I would love to know what your goals are and I would love to know how 2018 went for you. I know that it was a, a rough year for a lot of us and it would be nice to have some support in the comments for each other. Um, yeah, let me know. Also let me know what other topics you would like me to cover in my Tea Time with Chloe videos. Um, I did ask on Instagram a couple of months ago and I've kept everyone's responses. I had some great responses but it's always good to have more so if there is any particular topic you would like me to cover in a Tea Time with Chloe video or chat about or answer your questions about let me know um, in the comments below or you can message me um, privately if you would prefer. So that's everything I wanted to talk about. I feel like I've had a good chat with a big group of friends and I feel a lot better now. Um, I will see you in my next video guys. Bye!